Hi everyone, let's talk about something everybody loves to talk about, periods. <laughs> so this is Ganita, she's from a nomadic hill tribe in India. So for her period, she uses old cloth, but due to stigma, she can't dry it out in the open, so she hides it under her other clothes. This causes it to always be dark and damp, causing her to have recurrent infections. This is Anne-Marie. She works on a sugarcane plantation in the Philippines. There are no toilets on the field and she does not have ample supplies to get her through a day of work. So she ends up missing a week of work every month. For most of us, missing a week of work, we would still have income. We would still have food on the table. But for her, it means no income for that week and no food on the table for her family. This is Prathina. She goes to a boarding school in Nepal. She uses pads. So in the boarding school compound, there are boys, so she's shy to dry out her old cloth. So her parents, who are farmers, have an additional expense, which is pets for her. She has it good, though. Her mother and grandmother were banished to menstrual huts at the fringes of their village during their monthly cycles. This is Annabelle. She has extremely heavy flows. And in order to go about her daily activities and be productive, go to work, feed her children, send them to school, she needs to buy pads as well. But the problem here is the disposal. So what she does is she puts it in a plastic bag and burns it in her backyard. Her backyard is relatively small, so she ends up burning it right by her well. She can't bury it because the dogs in the village um, dig it up and they carry it around, which is very embarrassing. So this is Sarah. She's from Singapore and she enjoys doing marathons and triathlons. But having your period during these events are a real hassle. So she ends up popping pills, which messes up her menstrual cycle and causes her to have hormonal imbalance. Apart from the mere hassle is the fact that she uses 12,000 pads and tampons over her fertile life. So the problem that we're addressing here is that 70% of women across the globe have no access to any form of sanitation. They use things like leaves, bark, old cloth and mud. And the women who do have access to sanitation, we experience leaks, stains, discomfort, high expenses, and we produce a ton of non-biodegradable waste. So our solution is a Freedom Cup. A Freedom Cup can be likened to a reusable tampon. It is folded and inserted into the body. It opens up, forms a vacuum seal, and is leak-free. It sits at the base of the cervix and collects menstrual fluid for 10 to 12 hours. One cup lasts 10 years on average. This makes it the best option for the earth, the wallet, and the body. For the earth, we would save 12,000 pads and tampons. For the wallet, we wouldn't have to buy pads and tampons anymore. And for the body, as our cups are made of medical grade silicon and do not contain artificial fragrances and synthetic absorbents. Yeah, so we work on a buy one, give one model. So we, for every cup that, for every cup that we sell to a woman like us who can afford it, we give one for free to a woman who can't afford it in an underprivileged community. We have done about 17 projects to date in about seven countries across Asia and Africa. So we work in Singapore, Malaysia, Cambodia, Philippines, India, Nepal, and most recently we just came back from Nigeria. Yeah, and I think some of the findings that we found is, is super interesting. So we find that we're keeping girls in school. So 23% of all girls drop out of school the moment the first periods hit which I think is one of the big reasons for like, it, gender inequality across the globe. And apart from keeping girls in school, I mean, the problem with, 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 pads, uh, with periods in the third world is the fact that most rural schools don't have toilets, as well as the stigma that surrounds it. Uh, on top of that, we, have, uh, we find that our women are earning more money. So they earn more money because they can work the full month. And by earning more money, they have a larger say in the running of the household. They also report lower incidences of urinary tract and fungal infections. And we find that there's lower levels of soil and water contamination. On top of that, I mean, overall, women have reported a much higher standard of living. Beyond that, we're also working with hotels in Singapore to give us their old soaps. We refurbish them into new soaps, and then we give them out to these women alongside on our projects. I think, yeah, so I mean, in terms of, I mean, I would like to appeal to everyone, like here, I, all the communities that we, we work with, what we do when we first hit the ground is that we go and give back to the community. So we find un underprivileged groups, so whether it's homeless women or like people living in slums or refugee camps, and we go and we distribute the cups and we study them, we consult them, and we find out how best to enter the market that way. 
So that's a team. Joanne's not here because she's helping at home with my mom. But um, that's Becky and I. And yeah, we're done. Thank you. <laughs>